Hello, my knitterly friends. This is Rachel Treehouse Knits. Welcome to episode number 41. How are you all doing today? I hope you are doing great. It's good to be back. It's been a couple of weeks since I've last been on here and I've been working on a lot of things and I look forward to kind of sh catching you up and sharing with what I've been working on. You can find me as Treehouse Knits on uh, Instagram and on Ravelry. I also have a Facebook group which doesn't get as much love as Instagram does. So if you want to see my comings and goings, what I'm working on between these episodes, check out Instagram. So... I have not been on here a lot because I've been doing a lot of other things. When springtime hits, I tend to kind of back away from the knitting and focus a little bit more on other fiber arts. I just find that is a pattern of mine and I'm gonna go with it. I'm not gonna feel guilty for not doing a ton of knitting. I've been doing a bunch of designing, which I wanna show to you today, as well as share with you some socks that I did finish up, but those were socks done on the machine and I knit in the heels and toes. So I'll share those with you. I have some stitching and spinning works in progress that I'll share. And I do have quite a bit of acquisitions. So if watching acquisitions is not your thing, feel free to skip right through that. But I did go to YarnCon a couple of weeks ago and uh, just wanna share with you some of the fun things that I did and purchased on that day. A really exciting thing for me is that uh, the ladies at Plucky Knitter contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in doing some demos and teaching a learn to knit at the next Plucky Pop-Up in Hastings, Michigan. That's where they're located. That is happening on May 31st through June 1st. I'll put the flyer here that they sent out. They also sent out an email. I believe on Friday I will be doing a couple of demos on inserting um, the Afterthought heel and on knitting two at a time toe up socks. And then on Saturday, June 1st, I'll be teaching a learn to knit. So I hope to meet some of you locals out there that might be interested, or if you know, if you're watching my show, you're a knitter with a capital K, I'm sure. But if you have any friends, if you're local and they have said they wanted to learn how to knit, this would be a perfect time to come and learn the basics of the craft we all love so much. So yes, that's very exciting. So I hope to see some of you there. If you plan on being at the Plucky Pop-Up, please let me know because I would love to meet you. Okay, so why don't we jump right into last week's giveaway. If you recall, we chatted a little bit about lyrics, that misunderstood lyrics of songs. And oh my gosh, I think this was the episode with the comments that I laughed out loud the most. I did a random number generator and look who won. It's our favorite pottery person, Natalie, from Remembrance, Remembrances Pottery. She won. She said that uh, she hasn't done any unsung, um, any misunderstood lyrics, but her niece, her four-year-old niece, misunderstood um, from Uptown Funk, the song, the part where, they, where Uptown Funk says, don't believe me, just watch. Her niece thought it was, don't you leave me, juice box. <laughs> Uh, that's just too cute. So Natalie, get back to me when you see this and let me know what pattern of your choice on Ravelry you would like. Any pattern under, you know, seven bucks, a standard pattern. And I will gift it to you in your Ravelry box. So thrilled that you won and thanks for playing along. All of you, if you want to read more Misunderstood Lyrics, check out the comments from last week. So stay tuned toward the end of the podcast. I will share with you this week's giveaway, which is a good one. So I hope you stay tuned. Okay, let's talk finished objects. Let's jump into stitching. Last week, I was almost done with my Country Cottage Needleworks Spring, and I finished that. So I have an FO, here is Spring. I used colors that uh, I liked, I changed the colors out. And you know what the other thing I changed out? If you take a look at the words, it says flowers, bunnies, birds, nests, and then it said blooming, and then it said 
I'm reading these things backwards. <laughs> it said uh, butterflies and showers. And I they're all nouns except for the blooming. So I changed the blooming to blooms. It just made more sense to me. So here is spring. I love the colors that I've that I chose for spring. So that means I have spring done and I have autumn done. Here's the autumn. And I started summer. So let me show you summer. I have it in my Stitching the High Notes bag. Opera Joe makes these really cute project bags with the window in it. And I love how I can see what project I have going on. So I started winter and I actually, again, used colors, um, used my own colors. And most of these are Anchor or DMC that I had in my stash. Here I am, it's in my Q-Snap. Uh, I'm not sure about these colors, but I'm going to go with it. And it's crooked because I have it in my Q-Snap a little wonky. I'm not in love with these colors. Look at, you can see the fence I'm working on over there. It's, it's too pale. So I think I might take the white out and change it into a wooden fence and maybe find a different brown or I don't know. So this, these are the summer colors working on that. Uh, I still have not purchased a scroll frame yet. Thank you so much to those of you who emailed me with their suggestions. I really appreciated the insights that you had. And uh, I'm just gonna stick with the Q-Snap for now until I just, the right scroll frame hits me. Um, the way that I, it's what's working really well for me is I have a needle minder on here, which is just a magnet that has um, its magnet through it. And that way you can put your needle on it, you can put scissors on it, um, you know, little snips. And then I put it in my Q-snap and I made myself one of these um, grime guards, I guess they're called, to put around it. I need to make some more grime guards because I really, really like those. And they're super easy to make. There's a really good tutorial online right now. But I just have my, um, magnet ma magneted uh, needle minder I put my pattern in the magnet I just stitch away that way and usually I'll keep the scissors on the back because that's where I'm doing most of my snipping uh, one thing I want to share with you again I have been using this bitsy bob I shared with you the bitsy bob last time from that's so Kelly Co if you just google that's so Kelly Co Etsy shop she makes these little I don't know what you call it, a little notebook but check this out so it's snapped you open it up and this is an amazing way to store your floss here are my big flosses and then as I'm using because I'm pulling two threads out of the um, out of the floss you just uh, you just kind of lay them on this felt and they stick there they're not going anywhere and then there's a magnet here for a needle or if you want to put a pair of scissors on there it's just so neat and tidy instead of having a nest of all different colors mushed together. I really like this concept. I think she's patented it or it's patent pending. And then in here, I went ahead and just made myself using my laminator and some cardstock, my own little, I don't even know what this is called, but this is keeping my, my floss organized and not tangled as well. And then uh, I just wrap it up and put it right into the clear snapped pouch that's on in the Bitsy Bob. So check these out. I know she does have some in her shop. These are awesome. If you're a diehard um, embroiderer or stitcher and you like to be organized and you don't have a system yet, consider this. I love this. I think this is so cool and I wish I would have come up with this. This is such a great idea. So I just wanted to share with you that Bitsy Bob. Okay, so we talked about my finish with stitching and then I kind of jumped into a work in progress, but it's it all makes sense, right? It all makes sense. The other uh, item that, the other finished objects that I have are socks. 
I love this pattern. This is Regia Arne and Carlos, of course. Anytime I see a pattern that I love, it's Arne and Carlos. Regia design line. It's color 03653 if you're interested in finding it. These are going to a friend that housed me during a girl's weekend a couple weeks ago, and I hope she likes them. I also demoed to my knitting guild a couple weeks ago how to insert the afterthought heel. So I did these in class while I was talking and explaining. And uh, these are a cashmere merino wool cashmere nylon base from Audine Wools, which is a knit crate brand yarn. And oh, they're so soft. They're so much softer than the Regia. But I love the speckles. Look how there's no pooling. I love this yarn from Knit Crate. Um, can't go wrong with these. Let's jump into some works in progress, shall we? So I told you about my stitching. I also have some spinning and I'll insert a picture here of the wool that I used. It is a merino from CJ Kopeck Creations and the, um, the colorway is called Water Horse. I couldn't pass this up. Normally you go to a show and four ounces of color of dyed fiber can be anywhere from like 15 to 30 bucks I've been noticing. This one was 12 and I don't know why. <laughs> it's got, it had over four ounces. So I spun it up two ply and here it is on the bobbin. I plan on today winding it up and giving it a nice bath and maybe a little thwack. <laughs> and I'll share with you what it turns into once I do that. But this is probably the finest I've ever spun up. So, and it feels soft. It doesn't feel ropey. So I feel like I, I feel like I did good on this one. The reason you haven't seen me a lot on these podcast episodes is that I've been working on designing some of my own mittens, my own um, colorwork mittens. Ever since I started knitting colorwork mittens a couple of years ago, I've always had in my head different ideas. And if you recall, I knit um, a design and knit a pair for my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. I don't think I have those easily accessible. As I was looking for motifs for those, I came across other motifs that were inspiring me so much. And the first one that I came across that inspired me so much was a cherry pattern and a cherry motif. So these are my, and you ignore the pom-pom. I'm still trying to figure out if I like the pom-pom or not. I love any feedback. I asked on Instagram and I kind of got more people liking it without the pom-pom. Shelly uh, had a great idea to make smaller pom-poms and do two and kind of mimic the pattern. But let me tell you a little bit about these and I'll show you the one without the pom-pom. I have used Latvian braid. These are actually knit out of Stonehenge. Um, they're shepherd's wool. That, this is a local to me yarn here in Michigan that actually is produced very close to the cherry farm that these are inspired by. These are called Rennie's Mitts and Rennie's Orchards is a cherry orchard that um, my family has gone to for a very long time to get cherries for the season when we're up north. And I've written a little bit about that in the pattern, but here's the mittens. I've done a Latvian braid on the bottom with the cherry motif. And I love this motif because it definitely, I love that little, um, well, that little stitch in there. They could have just been all solid, but that little stitch gives it such dimension. So I thought that was really cool. It looks like the sun is hitting them. And then I went ahead and did another Latvian braid. This particular um, stitch pattern is called a cluster stitch. And I've done a five, had five stitch cluster stitch, which is a really, really easy stitch for, for big impact. And I just thought that looked like kind of a bowl full of cherries, the, the um, texture. And then I just did a really easy um, motif at the top with 
this kind of kind of a spiral top close. It's not a standard cell movement where the decreases are on the side. This is just a almost like the top of a hat kind of uh, mitten. I'll put them on for you. Here they are. So I hope you like these. I am um, putting a little call out for a few test knitters. I do have a couple that have expressed interest and I will be getting in contact with them this week. But um, for now, these are the mittens that, uh, they're called Rennie's Mittens and look for them on Ravelry. Hopefully, I don't know, in the next month or so. Hopefully before Cherry Festival in uh, Michigan, which is 4th of July for sure. Let's talk a little bit of, uh, about Yarn Con. A couple weeks ago, myself and a few of my guild friends, my knitting guild friends here in Grand Rapids, spent the day in Chicago at Yarn Con, and Yarn Con is getting better and better every year. We went on Sunday, actually, and we heard from all the vendors that Saturday was quite busy, and they had great days of sales. We also heard from several vendors who said this is their favorite show to vend at, and these were people who vend all over the country that were saying this. So kudos to that YarnCon team for making it a great experience for both we the customers and for the vendors that you're hosting. That's really cool. Uh, it was uh, not too crowded on Sunday. You had a chance to really talk to a lot of the vendors, which was fun. A highlight for me for sure was meeting Helen and Mary Beth of the Toad Hollow fame. They gave me this really cute backpack with their adorable logo on it and I could not resist this bag. It's meant for stitching. I love the animal characters on it. I thought it was really fun and see something different in it. Every time you look at your bag and the inside was this really pretty green polka dot. So was thrilled to get a Toad Hollow bag and I need stitching bags so that's great that they were selling them there. I think stitching is definitely making a comeback. So if you used to stitch like 20, 30 years ago, you might want to check into it again. Because of YouTube, it's really done the same thing that it's done for the knitting world. And uh, the amount of knowledge that's shared out there and the amount of products and services and um, just really cool stuff is, is a lot of fun. So do check that out. So that was my first um, purchase. Then I stopped by, you know, for me, when I'm walking around these shows, I tend to get a little overwhelmed with all of the hand dyed yarns. They're all beautiful. I just can't figure out, I just kind of get numb to them, I guess is my problem. I just kind of walk around, see all these different colors and dyers and they all start to kind of meld together in my mind. So when I see something that's dyed up that's different, it stops me in my tracks. And this definitely stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> I have never seen anything dyed like this before. This is by Orange Jellyfish Dream. Here is her logo. This is 462 yards of sock weight. And it's a 75-25 merino nylon called Intergalactic planetary. It's just, I, I don't know how you dye this. Let's open it up. Let's take a look. It just looks like it's more than a one-step process to me. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. And she actually showed me something that had been knit up in these colors, in this particular colorway, and it was stunning. So that is another purchase. Another dyer that stopped me in my tracks, the whole booth was stunning. Apoth of Fairy Fabrications, 100% merino, middle of the road sock. So this is uh, supposed to be a sock yarn with no nylon in it. I'm not sure if that's what I will use it for, but look at the beautiful colors. I love that it uh, has this little skein of this blue. It's a little darker in person when it's showing up, but really beautiful. Heel and toe matching mini. This is 85 yards in the heel and 100 grams in the big skein using eco-friendly acid dyes. And she was selling those eco-friendly acid dyes as well. It says machine washable, machine dry to damp. 
So, beautiful, beautiful fall colors, I think. I think I was on a fall kick after I had, after I got the really wild and crazy skein. <laughs> I was on a fall kick. Then I went up the stairs and there was the dear CJ Coho Designs, who I've, I see every year and I love to say hi to her. She's a wonderful dyer. She's been doing it for a long time, long time. And I couldn't resist this fiber to spin up. I must have been in a fall mood that day. This is called Colorway Kelly, Kellynch, Kellyinch. I have no idea what that is, I'll have to ask her. But it's 100% Corydell. And I have spun up Corydell before from Carrie, my wool mitten on Instagram, her flock of Corydell. So I'm really excited. I loved spinning that. And I'm really excited to spin up Corydell. I think it's a good yarn or a good fiber to spin up for beginners because it, I don't know, it just seems, it just seems easier to spin up. Beautiful colors, the greens, the golds, the brown. Oof, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and then the final thing that stopped me in my tracks, sorry for the crinkle, was Heavenly Niche. She was in the basement near the Toad Hollow ladies. And it sounds bad, She was. they were in the basement. But actually, I think the basement was a good spot to be. <laughs> it was not as you know, not as, I don't know. They were all happy to be down there. So that's what matters. I thought it was nice, but um, I'm going to do a little bit more research. Heavenly Knit Shea, I think her name is actually Heavenly. And she is doing, starting in May, a kind of spin along. I will try and put some information in the show notes once I do a little bit more research on it. But she's doing actually a breed study. And this is the blend that she created for the first um, breed study and it is 50% Shetland 50% rose fiber Yes, rose rose fiber. It is so soft. I'll tell you it smells like Shetland sheep <laughs> and uh, It's a uh, comb top four ounces of comb top. Oh that gray is just gorgeous and it's so shiny I, I don't know if it's the rose that's doing that I didn't know that you could spin rose fiber, but I guess why not? It's There's a fiber to it. So I will be spinning this up in the month of May, hopefully. But beautiful, beautiful. And um, check out the breed study if that's something you'd be interested in as well. The next, though, spinning that I'm planning on doing, I think, I don't know, it could change. Uh, um, at, um, what's it called? Stitches Midwest last year, I picked up from Esther's Place some fiber. This is a hand-painted colorway called Cape Coral and 100% merino wool top. The colors are so fun. So this is, I think I will just be spinning this up as it goes, the colors go. I'm not gonna do like a fractal or anything like that. But ooh, so squishy. The final things I wanted to show you, and it relates, sorry, I've got fuzz. I think I have rose hair floating, <laughs> not rose hair, rose fiber floating in my screen. The final thing I wanna share with you is, has to do with the giveaway, and it's the knit crates that I received this month. The uh, first crate, I got. crate that came in the mail first, wow, am I up close. <laughs> and this month's sock crate, first of all, it came with the cutest little stitch markers. We all have the circle stitch markers, but it's kind of fun to have different shapes. Let's see if you can see these. They're stars. Aren't those cute? And they're different size stars in there. They're small and kind of a medium, maybe even a large. But I love that they're putting unique um, accessories in. So it's this beauty. You've probably seen it already on Instagram. What's neat about it is that you can actually spin this up. It's been dyed so that, and, and if I'm wrong, correct me, but it's been dyed so that when they, they've taken a third of the skein and dyed it the blue, then a third and they dyed it this um, beautiful, ooh, dark, I don't even know what color you would call that. 
it's not a dark purple it's it's a, just a beautiful maroon like color and then this blue again it's all one skein so if you were to wind it into a cake and you were doing say two at a time toe up socks you could pull from both ends and the, the easiest way to do that is to take a big button that has two holes and put the two ends through the holes of the button and then you can knit two at a time and you'll end up with completely matching socks. I am so tempted to try that. I think I will actually, but really cool colors. The booklet that came with it has a really cool sock pattern um, that I believe you can knit up um doing what i just told you i'll show you the picture of the sock it's a really unique sock isn't that pretty so i don't know that's really really cool now you remember i think if you follow me on instagram i was hoping that i would get the red color of the knit crate for the month and i did end up getting it Oh, look at that red, it's so gorgeous. That is gonna have to be a cowl or a shawl or something. It is the squishiest, most beautiful, as usual. Um, it's Audine Wool's Psy DK. That's different though, it's a DK weight. It's merino wool cashmere, 302 yards. That is a hefty DK skein. And they give you two, two. So we have a total of over 600 yards to do something really cool. This would be a gorgeous, um, oh, what's this one called that I'm wearing? I'm getting the last bit of wear out of it because today's only a high in the 40s here. But oh, just something around the neck would be beautiful. This would also be beautiful for color work mittens. That might be another idea. Um, God, even if you want to have a bright hat, these this is gorgeous, and that they put it in the such a versatile weight as DK, I really appreciate that. Now they sent me the other color as well this month, so that is going to be the giveaway for this month. Look at this gorgeous green! Is that not a beautiful spring summer color? It's the uh, merino cashmere base again, super squishy. Love that color. It's stunning and I am going to throw in as well the um where did I put it the book that has all the patterns in it I must have set it down I am oh it's over here I'm going to throw in the book that comes with it that has I believe there's at least three patterns in this book so if you are interested in winning this month's knit crate just boy what, what should we do what should we ask let's have you answer the following question and just answer down below in the comment section of this youtube channel let's say your home is on fire and you've got all the things that you love out of the house you know pets family the basics but what two items of, what two items that you've created, would you, if you were able to grab them and save them, now these are items that you've created, it can be knitting or any other um, craft that you love to do, what two would you save? Let me know in the comment selection below what you would choose and you'll be entered to win this month's Knit Crate. Of course, if you want to join in on this month's Knit Crate, um, I do have a link down below and that will get you a percentage off that helps me with the show. I do get a tiny little kickback for that and I appreciate so much all of you who have used that link. That is awesome. That enables me to be able to ship out these prizes to you and just kind of keep this podcast going. <sighs> so I think that's it. I'm really excited about the plucky pop-up thing, you guys. I hope I can meet some of you and, and again, I hope to see some of you there while I'm doing the demo. Let me know if you're going to be there. I should, pro I will be um, podcasting before then though. And uh, I don't know, that's about it from, from Treehouse Knit Central. I hope that you are enjoying your spring, that uh, you're getting outside a little more. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's been a long winter. We actually just had a little bit of snow here over the weekend, but it's gone. 
It's a little chilly though, but that's life. That's life in the Midwest for sure. That's life in Michigan. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we will see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.